Tesla is making their new Cybertruck out of stainless steel, another bold move from a company that likes to rip up the rule books. But is it actually a good idea? Why has only one other stainless steel car ever been mass produced? And that ended in bankruptcy. Will it be different for Tesla or is the new Cybertruck a big white elephant? Stainless steel was invented by accident. An English metallurgist, Harry Brearley, was trying to improve rifle barrels just before the First World War. He found that adding chromium to steel inhibited its natural tendency to rust. This is because of a chromium-rich oxide coating that seals the metal from the elements. But it wasn't until the 1930s until people thought of using stainless steel on cars. The Allegheny Ludlam Steel Company approached Ford Motor Company with the idea of creating a vehicle to help them sell more stainless steel. Ford obliged and produced six unpainted Ford Model 68 Deluxes. Allegheny Ludlam loaned them out each year to their top salesmen. The cars were on the road for 10 years and each logged over 200,000 miles. The shiny bodies are still in excellent condition and have held up better than the rusting steel chassis. But here's the first reason as to why we don't see more stainless steel cars on the road. A retired Allegheny Ludlam employee revealed that when the cars were originally produced, the dyes were ruined by stamping out the stainless steel parts from the harder material. So to produce cars from stainless steel, car makers must spend additional money making dyes that could withstand stamping out stainless steel parts day in, day out. The Tesla Cybertruck uses cold rolled stainless steel, and that's even harder than regular stainless steel. And this makes the problem even worse. Ford agreed to another collaboration with Allegheny Ludlam in 1960 to produce two Ford Thunderbirds. The original 1936 cars had been very shiny, but with the update they went for a brushed finish, and I'm sure other motorists thanked them for it. After the issue with dyes with the 1936 car, Ford waited until the end of the car's production run before damaging the dyes producing the stainless steel cars. Again, Allegheny Ludlam used it to help publicize stainless steel and they toured the USA drumming up business. The new cars used stainless steel exhausts and mufflers and they must be the only 1960s cars still around today with their original exhausts. Ford and Allegheny Ludlam collaborated one last time with three stainless steel 1967 Lincoln Continental convertibles. If you want to see all three in their glory, you can find them at the Crawford Auto Aviation Museum in Cleveland, Ohio. By the 1950s, mainstream car manufacturers were dabbling with stainless steel, making small car parts such as hubcaps. GM went one step further in 1958 with the Cadillac Eldorado Brougham, which featured a stainless steel roof. They did the same with the 1979 Cadillac Eldorado Beer Ritz. Maserati's 1971 Bora also featured a stainless steel roof along with stainless steel windscreen pillars, but each part was a simple shape to make production easier. It would take a maverick car company executive to build a whole car from stainless steel. And that person was John DeLorean, a young high-flying GM vice president who one day quit his job to start his own car company. He decided his first car, the DMC DeLorean, would be brushed stainless steel, and the DeLorean Motor Company was probably the only car company without a paint shop. Only three cars sold to customers would be anything other than plain brushed stainless steel, and those were plated with 24 karat gold. Yes, a company mad enough to put gullwing doors on a car decided it would be a good idea to make a car that was covered entirely in real gold. The car's finish looked a little rough up close, but it had the advantage that small scratches could be taken out with a non-metallic scouring pad. Never worry about getting your car keyed ever again. However, some customers didn't like the unfinished stainless steel look, so took their cars to a paint shop to get the colour they wanted. But stainless steel had several disadvantages that have kept it from wider adoption. Number one, it doesn't rust. It seems silly to put this as a disadvantage, but to car companies who've built their entire business around selling you a car every five years or so, having a car that doesn't decay isn't that great. There are also government incentives that encourage customers back to car dealers every few years. 
With tight profit margins, many car companies rely on things like leasing agreements to stay in business and changing that may cause the business unforeseen financial problems. Number two, it's expensive. Stainless steel is more expensive than regular steel. And when margins are so tight, why add extra cost to the vehicle? Number three, it's hard. As we've talked about before, stainless steel is a harder metal, which makes it harder to form into the final shape for the car. It's also more difficult to weld. Number four, it's harder to repair. With a steel car, if there's a dent, you can use filler and paint to hide the problem. With stainless steel, especially unpainted stainless steel, the only option is to try and restore it to its original shape, which is hard enough with regular steel, but harder still with tougher stainless steel. Most stainless steel cars produced weren't painted at all because they didn't need to be. But to many people, choosing the color of their car is a big part of the process. There's a good reason why Fords come in more than black these days. And if you're going to paint the car, then the car looks no more different than normal car bodies that were becoming much more rust resistant by the late 1970s. Car companies did this by first getting better at rust proofing. Then they started galvanizing the metal and companies like Audi started making their bodies from aluminium that doesn't rust anyway and it's softer than steel so easier to form. Aluminium welding is trickier but over time they found ways to master it. So this brings us to Tesla's Cybertruck. They've opted to go for an even harder form of stainless steel, a grade that they'll use on the SpaceX Starship. So let's see how the same disadvantages stack up. Number one, the five year car buying cycle. Tesla isn't as affected by making a car that will last more than five years before needing to be replaced. As I mentioned above, steel car bodies don't rust like they used to and other components of a Tesla look like they'll last 10 years or more. Tesla's a company in expansion, so it's less reliant on repeat business than its customers. Number two, stainless steel is expensive. This will still impact Tesla, but they'll use less metal as the stainless steel body will be used as a stress member to make the car more rigid. With a starting price of $40,000, it seems the added cost of stainless steel isn't going to impact the final car price very much. Number three, it's hard. There are good reasons why the Cybertruck is all angles. Instead of bending metal, it's simply cut out and welded together. Tesla and SpaceX are learning to weld this material on an industrial scale. And like Addy with aluminium, they believe that they can solve the problem. Number four, repair. This one may be harder to solve, but Tesla's claiming the Cybertruck can withstand some major impacts, so maybe fender benders just won't be a big issue. But larger repairs could be a major expense, and repair shops will need to learn a whole new set of skills. But that very strength could be an issue when the car's released. Elon stated in the Cybertruck reveal that the body is literally bulletproof to a 9mm handgun. The transparent aluminium windows, while breaking during the presentation, have been shown to shatter but not allow bullets through. With a fast 0 to 60 time and a bulletproof exterior, will the Cybertruck become the go to vehicle for the criminal underworld? A big thank you to all of my patrons for supporting me. To get early advert free access to new videos or to appear in the credits, please consider supporting me using the Patreon link below from just $1 or 80p a month. And hit that subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.